My name is Marky Lemons Rao, real estate keynote speaker and international best-selling author. I am an early adapter of social media and technology, but I will be 50 this year. And so I am getting closer every single day to the average age of a realtor being that of 54 years old. I know that everyone on this call today is not from Mississippi. So if you can, at the bottom of your screen, there is an icon that says chat. I do want you to open that. It's gonna pop up on the right-hand side of your screen for those of you who are on your computer and let me know what state you're from because I'm seeing Alabama here I'm seeing Tennessee here so I'm seeing people who are licensed in other states here I want to know where you are from yours is slow to mute and I got you not a problem thank you Mississippi Tennessee I'll come through Mississippi Tennessee my family is from Mississippi. One side is from uh, Batesville. The other side is from Indianola. My family owns Chicago's oldest barbecue restaurant. So the people who own the barbecue restaurant, we opened in 1954. They're all from Indianola, Mississippi. A lot of people who own barbecue restaurants in the city of Chicago came from Indianola. Mississippi and I was supposed to go live in our house in Mississippi to attend college, but of course I derailed that program. I teach class from the concept of seek first to understand. I do not believe that there are any dumb questions. At any time, you can come over to the chat bar and you can unmute yourself. Just make sure that I've cleared whatever that sentence was that I was saying uh, as it pertains to social media and technology. What I do want to know, uh, if someone could type this in, in the state of Mississippi, is real estate considered an essential or a non-essential business? in your state, you're essential. Okay, great. So we're gonna talk about being essential and non-essential. And we have fellow realtors who are considered non-essential. That means that they've had to implement tools and strategies unlike anyone else. However, I do believe that how we interact and engage is going to change uh, because of the coronavirus. Now, let me say this. I have been using video for quite some time now. I love live streaming video. The reason I love live streaming video is due to the fact that I don't have to edit it, but it's also the most engaging form of content. So we're going to do a screen share and I have a PowerPoint available for you guys that we will share with you later. So anything that I'm sharing with you online, you can also have this offline. All the content is yours, so you do not have to worry about that. We're going to deal with now, okay? Not yesterday, not last week, but what should we as real estate professionals do now? What equipment do we need in order to survive and pivot our businesses for not only today, but then also as we start taking a look at what is going to happen tomorrow? Regardless to the fact of the business structure that you have, whether it's essential or non-essential, regardless to those facts, there are some things that you need to have in place. These are things that we should have had in place because the struggle would not be nearly as hard as it is for some. What was uh, kind of funny, and I'm not signifying on anybody, and I do understand that I'm from Chicago, so things might operate just a little bit different, but I had a fellow agent, she called me, and she had a buyer who was interested in a property. And the listing agent told her, let me go back to the office and fax you the disclosures. To be honest with you, I don't find that acceptable. There's no reason anyone ever has to go to the office. Every aspect of a real estate transaction can be conducted virtually, every aspect. And even today, there are things that we can do like the home inspection, <laughs> where, of course, the home inspector needs to be present, but due to things like live streaming video, 365 cameras, which I have a Insta 365 camera, uh, which is one of my favorite tools that I purchased in the past two years. You can get them for under $100, but here is a 360 camera. It's called an Insta 360, and it takes 360 degree photos and videos. So if you think about it, with live streaming video, 
with the Insta 365 camera, and you can even get a very small handheld drone, you can take photos and videos of anything and share them in real time. From a compliance standpoint, you have documented everything. And so there's no way to dispute it in case compliance was ever an issue. These tools and strategies work whether you're dealing with buyers or sellers. So imagine this, you have a buyer, all of a sudden they wanna go out and see a property. Today, I would highly recommend that if you've never had a signed buyer's agreement, that you get a signed buyer's agreement if never before in life. And you want to have that buyer, they need to have been totally underwritten subject to inspection of the property. I personally think it's unfair to jeopardize our lives, to jeopardize the life of a seller in order to get a non-motivated buyer in to see a property. I believe everyone today should be highly motivated if we're going to leave our house, put on our mask, put on our gloves, put on foot coverings, get out the antibacterial soap, also have the Clorox wipes. Now, the reason I say that, my husband is a coronavirus survivor. And when he leaves out the house, he has a full arsenal with him. Our son, he works for Accenture, but he's doing Instacart on the side as a side hustle. Every time he walks in the house, my husband starts wiping stuff off behind him. So we wanna look at this as the tools that we would need in our business to deal with buyers and to deal with sellers. But here's why I love video so much. The first thing is, not only do I believe that we should work with approved buyers, I believe that now would be the time to talk to your broker, managing broker, broker of record, what the title is in your state. And we need to get disclosures that allow us to film everything and to share content that does not disclose confidential information. Because you might give someone a phenomenal tip that you can break that one video tip down into one learning minute. But I would get a signed disclosure or waiver. It is estimated. So you remember back in the day, I'm gonna pull out one right now. They And I send these out all the time. I stop sending out regular cards. I send out photo cards. Now, the beautiful thing about photo cards is that people do not throw your photo cards away, okay? It's just something about a picture. And I get these made. I'm still sending cards from the comfort of my home because these cards are all by Walgreens and Walgreens is still open. And generally, they sell these cards 50 to 70% off. So I can have them shipped to my house or I can pick them up if I go to Walgreens. So the saying is a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, one minute of video content today is the equivalent of 1.8 million words. So we're talking about the buyers and the sellers. We're talking about video content because I'm gonna show you how this aids us in the business, but I want you to think about how do I repurpose this content time and time again. It's not the fact that we don't have enough content, it's the fact that we don't distribute the content enough. Video can increase purchase intent by 97%. Last year, I earned $24,000 in referral income. People know that I'm on the road 100 nights a year. I've been home more in the past 30 days than I've been home in the past 15 years. I just need you to understand that. And so I am creating a video, talking about the community, and I am sharing that. So let me give you a tip to go generate a lead. I don't know if your MLS uses a tool called Cloud CMA but I have a private Facebook group and people are talking about it's hard to generate leads. Last week, if you go to my Facebook account, it is on my public page. I did a video sitting right here in my office. I used Cloud CMA as a link because it will send the people an automated valuation model of their home. I talked about losing everything in 2008 
when we had the foreclosure market. And I told people, if you want to know the true value of your house today, click on the link. Click on the link. Anybody, I want you to come over here in the chat bar. How many leads do you think I generated in 24 hours from the comfort of my home doing a video to Facebook during the coronavirus, mind you? So I'm going to come over here to chat. We have 50 people on. Thank you guys for participating. I see people are, are talking to me. Let's come over here, chat. It dropped that chat bar and made it small. Oh, you guys are real, came up with some big, hairy, audacious goals. I do have videos <laughs> that I've generated 50 leads from. But last week, from the comfort of my office, now I'm disappointed to tell you the number, um, I generated four leads, and I referred those four leads out. So there's definitely a way to even generate leads in this market, but we have to talk about empathy. We have to let people know that we are there as a resource, that they can call on us to talk to us at any given time. And that's basically what I created last week in that video. Brands that use video marketing grow their revenue 49% faster than brands that do not. So I am a local celebrity. The reason I'm a local celebrity is because of all the video content that I've created. But not only am I a local celebrity, because I'm gone 100 nights a year, I consistently post my husband. I let people know he's my husband because I'm gone 100 nights a year. Without fail, even during the coronavirus, people walk up to my husband and they say, hey, Marky's husband, or you're Stephen, Marky's husband. I've made him popular because I post him online consistently. He did his first Facebook Live video two weeks ago to announce that he had the coronavirus. That video has been seen a roughly 2,200 times for his very first video. But what we wanted to do was share his symptoms because he only had loss of uh, smell, loss of taste. So you want to be very human in this process. But what are the tools that I need to work with the buyer and the seller? The very first thing is, you just need your mobile device. Now, when we think about our mobile device, I want you to think about who's your audience. If you're dealing with people probably 45 and younger, I would say you want vertical video content the way that I'm holding my phone right now. This would be your Snapchat, your TikTok, your Instagram stories, and your Facebook stories. One of the reasons people love vertical content, and it is the fastest growing form of content in the history of the internet, is due to the fact that it has more landscape. So I told you I'm going to be 50 this year, but I've been wearing a bifocal in my glasses now for 10 years. I can't see nothing. So I need as big of space as humanly possible to see the content. Or we can do traditional, what looks like our television. This would be horizontal video. Think about Facebook Live. Think about YouTube. Think about LinkedIn and Twitter. So there is an app that I want everyone to go get, and this is a free app. That app is called InShot, I-N-S-H-O-T. Everyone knows that I love free tools. InShot is an app that you can use for free. Do I have the premium version? Yes, I think I spent every bit of $9 for the calendar year. But what InShot allows you to do, it allows you to take a vertical video and put it into a square frame, or it allows you to take a horizontal video and put it into a square frame. You can change the format of your video content. So what do we need? What, what, what do we need in our arsenal? The first thing is we have equipment broken down into two categories. I'm sitting in my home office. I have different cameras lighting everything in my home office, which I'm going to show you. But when I'm on the road, I have everything packaged in my backpack. Everyone knows I carry a book bag, backpack at all 
times whenever I leave the house because I don't ever want to have an excuse on why I can't do my business. So these are the things that were in my <laughs> backpack before the coronavirus ever started. The first thing, there's a tool, it's called speedtest.net. Right now, if you're doing buyer and seller consultations using the internet, I highly recommend that you do them before 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Here's the reason. Once we move out of 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, the entire country is on the internet. You want to know what your upload download speed is. Really what's important is your upload speed. So if you're using any of these systems, if the upload speed is slow, you're going to have breaks in your audio, you're going to have breaks in your visual content, it's going to make for a poor video. So what you want to always do, the tool is called speedtest.net, you will check in your browser to see what the upload download speed is. I tell listing agents to always ask the seller for their Wi-Fi password, but even that today might not help you. So if you are doing buyer and seller consultations and any form of live stream and video, not only do you want to have the Wi-Fi, but you want to try to do it before 11 a.m. Every system right now has a strain put on it. So not only is the Wi-Fi being strained, but Facebook is being strained. Uh, Zoom is being strained. GoToWebinars is being strained. Uh, Adobe Connect is being strained because there's so many people on each of those platforms. Here would be an example. Normally when I'm at home in my office, my 23-year-old son, he is on the road. Well, guess what? He's at home working remote. That means that not only does he have his mobile device to communicate with his friends, he also has his work computer. My 13-year-old son, who's normally at school, they are now doing virtual learning. That means that in the room behind me, he has his computer open and likely has his TV on and I don't know it because he's multitasking too. Third, my husband, he's a locomotive engineer. But now that they've changed their schedule, he's working every five to six days. He's at home, in the other room, on the other side of me. He's watching cable TV. I don't know if that's putting a strain on it, but he has an iPad, he has a computer, and he has a mobile device. So I'm asking everyone to shut their devices down when I'm talking to you guys, but the likelihood of that occurring is slim to nil. That means that all of these people are using all of these different systems, okay? So speedtest.net will let you know uh, how your content is uploading and downloading, okay? The next thing we want to do, and I buy these things by the boxes, okay? I probably have about 12 of these boxes right over here in this cubby hole. The reason is, and if you don't have these, then I want you to get regular lens wipes. Think about if you wear makeup, have you sweated today? Did you touch your computer? That means you have sweat glands, makeup, and fingerprints all on the camera of your devices. It is going to impair the visual quality. Oftentimes, it kind of looks like the sun isn't out, okay? And so you get your lens wipes. These I buy from Costco, I buy them three, two, um, they come th packaged as three, not as the one. I actually, I'm gonna pull it out and show it to you. So before we ever do any type of video content or photos, this is how they come, okay? So three, two, they're packaged as three boxes. You want to make sure that your lens is clean at all times. I'm telling you, it is going to change the quality of your video. The next thing you want to do, and I want some of you all, you can do this right now at home. So my camera, just so that you will know, I'm going to put my finger there, right? You see the elevation is right at my eye. If your computer, if your phone, whatever you're looking at me with, is not at eye level, I want you to look around your office and I want you to get some boxes, okay? Or whatever you can get. But this is, I'm going to show you my computer. I would want, this is my computer, right? I would want my computer exactly at this level 
if I'm talking because I just want you to elevate it, pick up your computer and see how you look and, and how it changes, what you look like, okay? Because here's the truth, right? Especially for women my age, all right? There's nothing cute going on in this neck and this chin area. So what we want to do, because one of the reasons we're not doing this is because we don't like how we look, right? I want you to position yourself in the most positive light, okay? That means that we have to elevate. And if you can't go about an inch above, right? Because if you go an inch above and you angle it down, it will elongate you, therefore making you look a little thinner, all right? So what I want you to do, if you're not already on your mobile device, I want you to take your, you, you take your T-shirt, clean your lens off, okay? I want you to elevate your device, okay? And what I want you to do, whenever you're doing videos or content, you always have to find your camera. So for me, my camera's right now in the center. We often look to the left, look to the right, or more importantly, you know what we tend to do? We tend to look at ourselves. okay? Well, that means that your eyes are disconnected from the buyers and the sellers that you're talking to. If you can see how you look, you're looking at the wrong place. So you want to elevate the device and you always want to look directly at the camera so that people will feel as if you're talking to them. This is not about me talking to myself. Hey, Marky, how you doing? You know, if you can do this and you can primp and you can check what your hair look like, you're not looking in the right location. So we wanna make sure that we are looking at the consumer so that we can have a sense of connection, all right? So elevate those computers, elevate that mobile device, make sure it's clean, look at people. And here's another thing. I'm gonna hold this up so maybe you could see it, but you could see that I have a light behind my device. You never want the light behind you. You always want the light to be behind the device, okay? Because when the light is behind you, you get shadows and things of that nature. So if we can do just some of these little tweaks, we will like how we look a lot better. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna always make sure that your battery is charged. So I have quite a few batteries that I travel with. This is my favorite battery. It's the Anchor battery. Both of my batteries were given to me by Terry Watson. He makes sure that I'm always charged, trying to find that other battery. I don't know where it is. Oh, it might be in my purse. So you wanna make sure your devices are always charged. You have a backup battery because any video is going to drain your device. Wi-Fi works best than 4G. So I do also travel, told you everything is in this book bag, with a 4G hotspot. A lot of times we think that the lighting is the most important. It is not the most important thing. The most important thing is actually going to be your audio content. So you see I have a, a headset on, okay? Uh, this is actually one of my favorite tools that I use, but I also have a Yeti mic. I also have lavalier mics that plug into my mobile. Well, not now, I need to get a new one. I don't have a phone jack. This is a new phone uh, on my device so that you can get the best audio. People will watch poor visual quality. They will not watch if they cannot hear. So you wanna make sure that you have great audio. And then you do wanna check that lighting. So one of the things that I keep with me are these uh, ring lights on my device. And if this is your cell phone, this right here actually clips on. And the light on here is not behind the device but the light is still focused on me. And you would make sure that you hold it at or above eye level to give yourself the best 
possible lighting. So my equipment is inexpensive and I'll actually share with you uh, my Amazon link. A lot of the equipment is sold out right now because so many people are working from home that they've purchased a lot of the equipment off of the websites, okay? The next thing, today I'll be doing a Instagram live. We'll do it at 4.45 p.m. This is a selfie stick. The reason is so that it would actually help to stabilize the device. But this one acts also as a table mount tripod, okay? So it's a table mount tripod. So today when I am on uh, Instagram, what will happen is I'll actually turn this sideways. I'll bring it down. I'll tilt it just a little bit for us to do a Instagram Live. There will actually be two of us on that Instagram Live. And as you can see, everything just packs up, right? And I travel with this equipment at all times. Are there any questions about your car or your traveling equipment? Do we have any questions? No questions? Let me see, I see a chat, hold on. And if you wanted to, you can always uh, unmute yourself do if you, you wanna a, talk to me. Do you yes. have a website you sell all of these things on? Yes, ma'am, I'm gonna put the link in uh, over on Amazon. I, ha I am an av Amazon influencer, so I have an entire equipment list for you. Uh, so the question is, what is the 360 camera that I use? I use the Insta360. So you can go to Amazon or you can go to Insta360 itself. And it took me a month to buy this device because I couldn't figure out how to use it. Then what I realized, and I have a phone case on, so it's not going to plug all the way in, you, the app actually turns it the correct way, but you hold your mobile device upside down and that's how you use it. So I use the Insta360. You can probably get these 100 to $149 right now, contingent upon the website. You can do photos, you can do videos, you can have fun with it. So I actually really like mine uh, quite a bit. Also, if you're using Matterport, Matterport has a more expensive, maybe $200 Insta360 camera that goes with it to make Matterport more cost effective. My ring lights reflect on my glasses. You have to take your uh, glasses off. I be, even if you got the blue lights, uh, the blue tint in your glasses. So when I put the ring light on, I actually take my glasses off because I also see uh, it, a reflection as well. With the ring light, it shows my glasses. So yeah, you, you gotta take them off. That's the best that you can, uh, that's the best that you can do is actually just take it, uh, take it off take off your glasses, because other than that, you're gonna see that reflection. Great questions, guys. So I have a totally different set of equipment at home versus being on the road. And everything that I use at home, if I, I also have another set to travel with, because what I don't want to do is break my equipment down if you break it down, you're gonna forget something. You're less likely to do video content. So I would be considered probably a Zoom super user. I hop on Zoom anywhere from three to 10 times in any given day because all of my equipment is set up in my home office. Also for your home office, for your buyer and seller consultations, I don't use a green screen. Um, a lot of people encourage green screens. If you don't like your background, then I would say you could use a green screen. However, a lot of people, when they use green screens, you will see the green screen break if they make um, sharp movements. And so my background is just consistent all the time and I don't use a green screen. I don't even own a green screen for that matter. Uh, so all of my backgrounds are either staged or they're natural backgrounds. But if you're going to use your home computer, what I want you to do is stop using the Wi-Fi. I want you to go straight from, is that the modem? I think it's the modem, yeah. Straight from uh, the modem. So I'm going, I'm coming straight out of the box 
And I have a long blue, just to kind of show this to you. Let me see if I can pull it up. I have this long blue, if you could see it, e ethernet cord that plugs into that device. So I hardwire from home all the time. I keep my device hardwired and you can get these off of Amazon. At home, I use the Yeti mic as opposed to a lavalier mic that I would have uh, in my backpack. I also use, this is a Sennheiser over the head mic. The reason I use this one more than I use my Yeti mic is because I'm animated and I move a lot. So that means that the mic travels with the mouth and you don't get breaks in my audio quality. At home, I have the Logitech. Oh, let me tell you something. If it's one thing, one thing that you would buy at home, it would be the Logitech uh, camera. Here's the reason. It will greatly improve your visual and your audio quality. So if it was one thing on this entire list that I would buy from home, it would be this camera. I can tell you now, a lot of people are sold out of it right now because it's the number one go-to device. I actually just sent back, I think I spent $700 on a camera to do 4K. And once I elevated my light, I kind of like, it wasn't worth the investment, so I sent the camera back. So I'm still using this camera. They do have a 4K camera that you could use. And if you want to just get super crisp with it, you could use uh, a GoPro Hero as well for the 4K. But the problem with the GoPro Hero is that you'll have to buy, I think it's like $139, you would have to buy a capture card. So that means that the camera goes to the capture card, the capture card goes to your computer. So this is the most cost-effective, best quality for uh, visual and audio. If it was one thing, this would be what I invest in because I did a webinar last week and I showed them the difference of having using the uh, built-in camera on my computer having the computer down. So the first thing, elevate the computer. It'll be a difference. The next thing is buy this camera. Those are the two things that you can do to change how everything sounds and looks. And then I have this big ring light. It's mounted to my desk. Uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna get up to go over there, but you can tell that I'm pretty well lit. So that is my home office. And I don't have a tripod. Well, I do have a tripod at home, but my light doesn't sit on a tripod anymore. I wanted to get everything off of the floor to create more space. And so my light is actually attached to my desk, okay, just to kind of give you an idea. I'm going to take this link and I'm going to actually post it uh, in in a little bit, but I have all of the equipment laid out for you over on Amazon. So if you want to buy any of the equipment, please go right ahead. I will tell you that a lot of this equipment currently is not in stock. So you kind of want to hunt it down. Even Best Buy doesn't have it because uh, I have been hunting <laughs> this equipment down, but everything is sold out. And I don't think the Logitech has had any idea that they would sell this much um, video equipment and audio equipment in such a short period of time. So now what you have to decide is what is the purpose for you doing the video? But let me, let me come back. So if you're dealing with buyers, you can do virtual showings. And what I'm encouraging everyone to do is to enlist the help of the sellers. If the sellers don't want you in their house, I don't ever have to go on a seller's house. But what I do have to do is I have to engage the seller. That means that you could do what I now call a guided seller showing. That means that you meet with your seller. You could do FaceTime. You could do Zoom. There are numerous tools. You have the seller because you need to do a seller preview. So I need to do a seller preview before I do a seller guided tour. I need to look around the house to make sure that it's staged in the most positive light. Once the seller walks me through, I then call the seller back using one of these live streaming tools. You could do Instagram Live, you could do Facebook Live. If you have the enterprise version of Zoom or the webinar version, you can do a, a webinar that streams live to YouTube 
or to Facebook. If you're using third-party tools like uh, Restream.io, you could go Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, well, Periscope, and if LinkedIn is giving you access, you could do it to LinkedIn. I am going to come back once we have meet privately, and I am going to guide people through. All I need the seller to do is follow my verbal instructions. You know, we're at 213 Main Street. Mr. Johnson, how you doing today? Ms. Assuming Mr. Johnson is the owner. Oh, I find, oh, Mr. Johnson, can you please show us the living room? Oh, Mr. Johnson, can they see the view of the kitchen from the living room? I need you to pivot, right? Whatever the case may be. Oh, Mr. Johnson, could you take us upstairs and show us the master bedroom suite? Mr. Johnson, tell me, what is the one thing you love the most about your home? I don't have to be there. When the home inspector comes, if that home inspector is armed with a 360 camera, if they have a, a GoPro hero, if they have a, a drone, all they need to do is capture the content. And then what they do need to do is add that additional step. And that would be a buyer home inspection review. But they have all the film, they have all of the photography that they need. Before we go to the next se uh, se section, are there any questions up to this point? You can come on over and talk to me. Okay, I have one. Let's see. I like my background as well, <laughs> okay. We talked about the ring light. How do you address that? Any questions? Okay, not a problem. So I want you to pull out your mobile device. Facebook has definitely made a lot of changes. Uh, Facebook has. Facebook is my preferred tool. And the reason is that Facebook is also owns Instagram, Messenger, WhatsApp. Couple of things that I want you to think about. Uh, I want you to pick five people every single day that are in your contacts to communicate with. And the way that uh, I would say communicate with them, and I've done audio and I've done video, uh, people have told me they prefer video. So I am going over to Facebook. And then in uh, the top right hand corner, is my messenger and I have a few messages or I have more than a few messages. I am going to pick somebody on this list to send an audio message to. I'm going to send one to Valerie and the reason I'm going to send one to Valerie is because her long-term companion passed away from COVID uh, the other day. So I'm just going to hit uh, her profile. I actually had locked her because I thought I was getting spam from her, okay? So once I come over to her account, at the bottom there's a, a microphone. I'm gonna show you how simple this is. I'm gonna hold on that microphone. Hey Valerie, this is Marky. I'm just giving you a call to tell you I am sorry about your loss. If there's anything that I can do for you, please feel free to reach out to me. My prayers are with you and your family. So how simple is that? The reason you want to bring in that audio message is because it has some emotion in it, okay, versus your uh, text message that doesn't. So five people per day. Now I'm going to pick someone and I'm going to do a video call to them. Let's see who we can do a video call to. I'm going to do one to Ryan Cotter, okay? So this is Ryan. I am going to do a video call to him and I'm going to let him know why I'm doing a video call. Hey, Ryan, this is your girl, Marky lemons Rowell. I'm actually using you as an example today in class. I am talking with my fellow realtors from Mississippi, but I wanted to thank you so much for sending me those masks. I look forward to receiving them, but I just wanted to tell you thank you. So we're going to send that. 
okay? So every single day, because we need to reach out to people, audio would be best if you don't like how you look. If not, you definitely can do the video. And think about this. When we do the video at the bottom, I can actually put filters on my face so I can make myself look cute. There's no excuse for us not to leverage this device during these times in order to connect with people in real time. So Facebook is my hangout spot. I'm sending messages, either audio or video, but here's the thing, secret agents don't get found. When we are talking publicly, right, we can get more eyes on our content. I told you that I did a video with my husband, I think 2,200 views, I don't even know how many shares. But last week I made a post about the coronavirus. That post was shared over 1,900 times. The only way it was shared so much is because my post is not a private post. And what's crazy, it wasn't even, a, it wasn't even like beautiful. It was a screenshot. So it was a JPEG. It was a photo, but it was a white background with black words. It was a text message, right? In the form of a picture. 1900 shares. I'm still baffled by why it was shared so many times. So you want your content and your videos to be public. If not, you can share it only to your friends, but note that your friends can take a screenshot and they can share it to whoever they desire. You can do friends accept and you can do specific friends. So what I'm going to do now is I want to see if I come up here and let's want to come out of here for a second. We're going to stop sharing and then I'm going to come back and reshare. Are there any questions you guys have before I come back and reshare and show you my actual computer? No questions? And remember, you can unmute yourself at any given time if you want me to hear your lovely voice. Why is this screen not minimized for me? Hold on. Let me come back out of here. Stop sharing. Sometimes it will not allow me to be great, but that's okay. Hold on one second. Minimize. Let me see if I can do it now. Screen share. Okay, hopefully it'll let me go over here. Okay, so we're going to come over to Facebook. Facebook now has a new interface, okay? And so if you're going to do live streaming video content from your computer, this is what it would look like. And let me come back over here and make this 100%. Okay. So I'm going to go over to my personal Facebook account. And the way Facebook is doing live streaming video now is they actually have what is called um, Facebook Live. It's a producer's program. I'm acting as if I'm getting ready to post a Facebook Live video. Can everybody see my computer? Just hit, shake, shake your head up and down. Okay, great. When I hit live video, it is now opening into live producer. That means that from one location, I can do several things. So over on the left-hand side, <clears throat> I can share to my personal timeline. I can share to a page that I manage or I can share to a group. So let's say that I was gonna to share to my timeline. When you share to your timeline and only to your timeline, when you hit that public button right under share to your timeline, it gives me the options of who I want to share that content to. If I was to come back over here and hit share to my timeline and go share to a business page, <clears throat> What it's going to do is give me the option of the business pages, and I can do the drop down, but you notice that public button disappeared. You cannot do a private Facebook Live video to a group or to a business page. You would give it a title. You would then say something. And what we would then do is come over here to the right hand side once we hit go live but now i can decide if i want to share my computer or not this is the new facebook live interface so it's one location but it dictates 
where we can go. So whether I was to click this from my personal page, a business page, or a group, it is going to still pull me into this one interface. We want to think about doing Facebook Live video content because of the fact that that one minute of video content is equivalent to 1.8 million words. But more importantly, when we start looking at this, I want to show it to you from the mobile device as well. From the mobile device, I would simply go, you can either go to your page or to your feed. I would hit that live button. I would come over and then hit the share live video content. I could put a filter on my face if I so desire. This is what it would look like. Um, I showed you two different uh, interfaces. This is uh, from the home page, I think, and then this is from on the right hand side from the feed. Uh, so you see the icons when you hit on the right hand side, you know it's from my page, Marky Lemons Row, that public button, it's right up under the name in the mobile device. What I'm encouraging every person to do is to do one minute, 60 seconds of live video content per day. Yesterday, I interviewed a young gentleman from YouTube. No, he had owned YouTube agents. He's an agent in the Portland, Oregon area. If you were going to do videos today, besides if you have Cloud CMA, uh, asking people if they want to know what the value of their home is during the crisis, okay, the next thing would be a comparison, a cost of living comparison. Uh, people still want to know this information. People are still buying real estate. And the language that we want to use today is a little different than the language we were using. So I want to give you some key terms that you might want to bring into your content today due to the coronavirus. We would use words like change, turbulence, turmoil, trouble, uncertainty, downturn, crisis. We might also use to extend, to preserve, to protect, to safeguard, to survive, to restore, to reboot, to pivot, and to flex. We're going to open up the lines now so that anyone who has any questions please feel free to either unmute yourself. Hold on, I have a couple of questions here. Can you go through the steps again? Candace, which steps would you like me to go through again? That's not a problem. Would you send me a, would you send a message to the people you don't know on your Facebook page? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't send a message to the people I don't know because let me, let me, if I did five people per day and we were to remain on lockdown for the duration of this year, I still have not gone through everyone in my sphere of influence. So what I would say you would do is if you come back and you look at your database and some of you have it broken down, you have your A's, your B's and your C's. I'm going to one first check on all of my buyers and sellers that are in the pipeline they get messages first. After that, then I would go to my B levels, okay? Um, people I've met, okay? Uh, then I would go to maybe my non-mets, but it would take me years before I would get to those people who I do not know on Facebook, okay? Um, you want to organize your contact based on um, your sphere of influence. So you want to reach out to those who are closest to you first. You want to reach out to those who are closest to you first. I am actually coming back out. Uh, I was trying to get that link for you guys, but it's not letting me be great. So how many people here by a show of hands have done a live before? If you can, come over to the chat and let me know how many people have done a live video before. Just type in me, 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 me. walk us through how to send a video on Facebook. Okay, we're gonna go back and do that again. Okay, so I am gonna actually do screen share again, and we are going to go back as if I was going to do a video on Facebook. So the first thing is, it doesn't matter whether you start this from your personal page, a business page, or a group. I am coming in from 
my personal page. When we're on our personal page, when you look at your regular post at the top, it says live video. I would come to live video. And now I'm thinking you might have been asking about Messenger. So at point in, let me know if you wanted me to do another video message again, because then we could do another one. That means that I've sent three messages today. Uh, on the left hand side, right under your name, it lets you decide if you're going to share this to your timeline, a page you manage, or a group. Okay, so I could go to the pages I manage. And I have three, I believe, in here. So Marky Lemons Unlimited, National Association of Real Estate Brokers, Memphis, and then the Women's Council of Realtors, West Michigan. Right now I have access to those pages. So I can select which one of those pages that I wanna go live to. I would give it a title, a description, and at the bottom, I can schedule that. I can, well, this one says schedule only because I accidentally typed this, tapped this up here front. So I wanna go live now you'll see at the bottom that go live button. Once I give it a title and a description, that go live button will turn to blue. So let's just type in the word live here. Let's type in live here. Once that finishes, it should, it's not giving me that ability. Hmm, hold on one second. Uh, go live now, Marky Lemons, Marky Lemons Unlimited, live, go now. It might not let me tap it because I'm over here accessing the cameras. So that might be it, but it, this would turn uh, blue. That would be if we were doing it from the computer. But you might have been asking me if we were doing it from the mobile device. So I need you to uh, type that word back in for me. I'm coming back over here to check. Uh, let's see, from Messenger, I'll do that. Can you talk about some of the topics you might talk about in a video? I know you speak about the community a lot as well, uh, not just yourself or the market. So I talk and I'm gonna show you uh, via the messenger in a second. I am highly personal. I only have five good secrets. So I tell all of my business. Uh, I had to talk my husband into letting the world know that he had coronavirus because he doesn't share his personal business like I do. I've talked about oh, domestic abuse, that my, my father was uh, physically abusive to my mother. Uh, I've talked about my parents being addicts, uh, lessons learned from dope fiends, right? So I am highly personal, but I talk about things that impact the South Side of Chicago. So I am clearly a product of the South Side of Chicago and my surroundings. I talked the day that I received my son's degree in the mail. I talked about starting off as an unwedded mother and the fact that his biological father did not contribute more than $4,800 to his entire existence and that that was my degree because 78%, and I want you to understand why, why I share at that level, 78% of African-American children born in 2018 were born to an unwedded mother. So even though I'm married with two children, I need people to understand, I understand their problems, their difficulties and what they had to go through, right? So I talk to my sphere of influence and I'm highly personal. From a real estate standpoint, I like to talk about evergreen content, content that is good for years to come. So very seldom do I talk about a listing. I talk about uh, how to create $190,000 uh, with sweat equity using a 203k loan. I talk about down payment assistance and grant programs. I talk about uh, investing in foreclosures and short sales. I talk about putting a property in trust. So I'm consistently talking about things that are of value today, tomorrow, or next year, which is why so many of my videos, I can go pull them from four, four, three, two last year and repurpose them or repost them now because they're still relevant. What you wanna do is sit down and identify the problems of the community that you serve. And you want to be the problem solver for your community. Whatever those obstacles are that they have to overcome, you wanna be the resource. I think I told you yesterday, I interviewed the gentleman from YouTube Agent, A Cost of Living. He said this is his number one video. 
So do the cost of living, right, in Jackson, Mississippi, okay? You, look, and then after you do Jackson, you can pick three, four other locations in Mississippi. And then you can do a cost of living comparison, right? So if you go check out YouTube agents, actually, oh, what is it? Live in Oregon, I believe it is. They have two YouTube channels and they're doing a really good job on engagement. I would follow them to kind of get an idea for some of the subjects that they're speaking about, okay? Uh, so coming back to Messenger, I am going to go open my mobile device. Four, two, and let's come out of here. We're gonna go to Facebook. When you go to the Facebook app, on your top right-hand side, there, you see, it's a little number two for me. Wait, let me move it over so you can see it, okay? I'm gonna go tap up there in my top right-hand side. When I tap at that type, top right-hand side, you'll see the people I've already sent a message to. So I sent one to Ryan, I sent one to Valerie, okay? So now I'm gonna, you see the young lady in the yellow dress? I'm gonna actually tap on Trudy Holmes. Trudy Holmes is an agent in my office and she sent me some video to watch, okay? At the very bottom, there is a camera, a picture icon, and an audio icon. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the camera icon. So this is the screen that comes up. But this time I'm gonna actually put, and I'm gonna turn to see if you can see me. I'm gonna actually put, yeah, you can see this. Okay, I'm gonna put a filter on my face. So we're gonna put the bunny rabbit ears on. So when I turn those bunny rabbit ears, I think you could see that, right? I have little bunny rabbits on top of my head. I am gonna turn this around and I'm going to do a video to Trudy. Hey Trudy, I got you with me today in class and I am demonstrating how to send a video message. How you doing today? Just checking on you. Hope you and your husband are doing well. See you soon somewhere out in the Chicago streets. So now I send it to her and she has a video message, okay? So, but you could, I could also just send that audio message and the audio message, let's go to, uh, I'm gonna go, my son is sending me some real estate. There's a microphone at the bottom. So I'm gonna send Skylar a message. I'm gonna hit the mic and here, press and hold. It says press and hold, uh, press and hold. We're gonna hold that. Hey, Skylar, this is mom. I'm just sending you a message. I don't know why we looking at a 12 unit in Harvey. We're not buying anything in Harvey, Illinois, sweetheart, but it seems like a phenomenal deal. And we're gonna replay that. Okay, so that's how you would send your messages. Will you speak more about the sign disclose? Oh, yes, I will. So when it comes to disclosures, if you're utilizing things like Dot Loop, DocuSign, or any third-party tools that your association provides you, then you could do the consultation the same identical way that I did screen share to show you the internet, to show you my PowerPoint, you can then walk them through each page of the disclosure, but you sent it to them either via dot loop or DocuSign, and then they can go back and sign them, okay? So you have to have some type of third party tool for those documents, but you can review them with them anytime. You can review them with them. Let me see, but you need to have screen share capabilities, okay? So I wanna go through the screen with you, and I wanna be able to see you and see those uh, disclosures. So that would be the way that I would handle that. Uh, will you speak about that mentioned? You are speaking about doing the one minute videos. Um, wait, mentioned at the top of the, okay, so you have that now. So definitely you have to bring in dot loop DocuSign into 
all of this so that you can walk them through. I'm using a tool called zoom.us. Zoom is a great tool. You can meet with people. I think it's a 40 minute, 30 or 40 minute limit. I don't have a limit because I have the enterprise version where you could set that consultation up. You have to be very timely and get through it. If not, they will boot you out of the system if you're using the free version. Will this be available to play again later? Amanda, do you want this to be available to play again later? <laughs> so what you will receive um, from your association, so be on the lookout, you'll have the PowerPoint, you will have the entire video. I needed, I looked back over here to make sure that it was recording. Um, and let me say this, the association is recording the video, so I'm glad that wasn't my responsibility. So I'll send you the PowerPoint. I will send you the link to all of the equipment. So yes, you will have everything. You can watch the replay at your leisure. There are some things I missed that I would like to go back and review. Not a problem. Okay, Zoom is free for 45 minutes. Thank you, Amanda. So you could do 45 minutes, but let me tell you something. They will kick you out at 45 minutes. So you have to be very, very timely. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to type them below. You could reach out to me. I'm going to send you some additional resources, Amanda. One, I do have a podcast, Social Selling Made Simple. We have uh, over 60 editions. It's a top-ranked podcast. I am an international best-selling author. I will send you the link so that you can download uh, the Kindle version of the book for free. And I have some other resources that are available for you uh, and your members. So I will get an email off to Amanda once we conclude so that uh, once this video renders, they can send you all of the content. What questions do you have? And if you would like to, feel free to unmute yourself and talk to me. Um, I have something that I want to uh, let our members know because when I was at NAR in November, I had literally just gotten out of Marky's session and Amanda and I were out walking around and I got um, a phone call and I ended up getting scammed and um, they got my bank account information. I was flipping out. And um, anyway, when I got back and kind of got, everything taken care of. I thought about what Marky said about posting content that's important for the community. So I ended up doing a Facebook Live video from my office and told my experience with getting scammed and what happened and what to look out for. And I got over a thousand shares on that and ended up, it became um, the news, Channel 5 got word of it and interviewed me on the news about it. And I would have never, probably would have never done that if I hadn't have gone to Marky's um, session and learned that, hey, that's important. That it's not about real estate, but it's about the community and keeping them safe. And cause I, I mean, I didn't lose a lot of money, but it was scary and I had to change all my bank accounts and everything else. So uh, what she's saying is great and uh, really, Anything that can help the community is, is something that you should share. Anything. And so you want, it, you want to be that go-to person, but really what you want is that people know they can approach you. And so what I tell people now, that don't do this if you know you got a funky stink attitude and can't get it together because people will walk up on you in public and they want you to be the same person you were online. So when I'm out and people start staring or even sometimes people will point, I no longer, you know, it used to be, what's she, what she looking at? No, you cannot do that anymore. Assume that they know who you are. So as soon as I wave back or I say, hey, how you doing today? Every response is, I knew that was you. I know you don't know who I am, but you Facebook Marky. So you have to be clear that people are going to see the video. People will be talking about you whether you know it or not. So people walk, literally every day, people walk up to me and have conversations with me. And oftentimes they know I don't know who they are. So they will say, we've never met before or you don't know me. But that's what you want because then you become first in mind. You become that thought leader and go-to person. 
and it also allows you to build your referral business. So I'm earning money, sitting at home, all the little stuff I've been buying around here for my office comes from the fact that other agents are out here. I, I know that I'm asymptomatic uh, for the coronavirus, so no symptoms at all. Um, I don't want to be a spreader. So I have now been uh, self-quarantined. It'll be seven weeks on Friday. Seven weeks. Yeah, I'm glad the phone decided to ring once we were over. So if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself. If not, what will happen is in the next 15 minutes, I will send Amanda the PowerPoint the Amazon link, and then I have some other free resources that are available for you. You can reach out to me on Facebook. We do have a private Facebook group, Real Estate Live. If you have any questions, I encourage you to ask the questions in the group as you aren't the only person with the question. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys today. Amanda, was there anything else you wanted me to tell your members? Um, it, one thing, because I know we're getting close on time, I think a lot of people's hesitations, like you said before, they don't think they look good on camera or whatever else. I know when you were at National, you told the story of shooting the video in your bathrobe. I think of the listing behind you and how many hits it got and whatever else. Any words of encouragement on, it doesn't matter what you look like, just do the video. Okay, so as I always let people know, I am the shortest, darkest, roundest person in the room with the least amount of hair. And no, people could care less about how you look. They care if you can solve their buying and selling problems. So we're gonna come back out to Facebook and let me go pull up a couple of videos. Uh, I often do my videos with no makeup on because if I'm always made up, people will assume that they have to be made up. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of videos that we've done that have had fabulous engagement where I have not had on any makeup at all. And if this doesn't pull up for me, hold on, let me close this live producer out. Okay, let's see here. Videos. So I am taking you to my video feed, just so you can kind of get an idea. Uh, no make, well, I had makeup on this left hand side, but let's just go through these videos. And I'm actually going to pull a video. I want to say this video is about two years old to kind of give you uh, an example of the value of just going live. Actually, you can tell I don't have any makeup on, on any of these videos. Um, man, that was a long time ago that I created this video. Let's see. Whew. How long ago was this? Okay, good. We're finally here. All right, so this video right here, I'm gonna start to play it for you. As it's rendering, I did this video So that video was across the street from my house. They've actually built new houses where I was standing. And looking at your computer, there's a graystone two-story on the right-hand side. And then you can tell that you have these new construction on your left-hand side. Well, the new construction, uh, those are my neighbors now. Those houses came to the market at $825,000 on the south side of Chicago. I live in that grayish color house. We owe roughly $190,000 on a house. This video was 7.15 a.m. I had just dropped my son off at school. I had not brushed my teeth, okay? Uh, I tell people I always put on a bra though, but I had not brushed my teeth. When we come over here and look at the numbers, you can tell that 2,000 people watched the video. It received 11 shares. I, I, I ended up generating over 20 leads as a result of this video from 7.15 a.m. in the morning to the point that the listing agent came and took a video course with me. Mind you, the listing agent is also my neighbor. He lives around the corner. He then, to kind of show you what this looks like, we then, the following weekend, that same house on the corner that sold, he allowed me to come and do a 360. You see it saying 360. So let me stop this. 
And well, let me just turn it for you. So that's David O. Okay. That's the listing agent. That was with the 360 camera, which is why when I take my finger and swipe it, you can see that I can spin all the way around. Okay. David O was scared to do video. So the first one I did using Cloud CMA, this one I used Cloud Stream. I generated 20 listings as a result of doing a video, no makeup, 7.15 a.m. in the morning. People want you to solve their problems. Truth be told, you think, that, that, think about this now, you gotta think about it. You think the insecure wife wants you to look better than her in the grand scheme of doing business. You think they want you to show up looking better than them? Absolutely not. They want you to solve their real estate buying and selling problems. So get over how you think you look, because guess what? When you show up, they're gonna, they're gonna see you. This is what's so funny. I'm a part of a video series, and maybe three weeks ago, there's a gentleman, I've never met him face to face, never. However, I've seen all these photos of him, hair still black, uh, maybe 40, 50 pounds ago, and finally, I see him on the video series live. Hair white, 50 pounds heavier. And to me, that's false advertising. Like, I could not get over the lie he was telling in his photos when we're supposed to have truth in advertising. You're going to be that person who shows up. And the last thing you want is for them to not recognize you because you've already started off on a lie. Be that same identical person. It's no way, it's no way to avoid you. You look how you look, you sound how you sound. And let me tell you this, I wasn't always as comfortable as I am now. I got comfortable when I did my first Facebook Live video. It was at William Sonoma. I had been waiting on Facebook Live to come to the Android because the Android device gets things late. And I had never had that type of engagement. So once I did that first video, hair not done, I'm in yoga plans at Williams-Sonoma on a weekend in a cooking class with my youngest son. I've been hooked ever since because I realized right there in that one video that people did not care about how I look. They want that human interaction. Be who you are because it's no way to avoid it. Absolutely no way. And if I wasn't generating so many leads, and making this extra money, right, then I might feel different, but it's working. So not only do you want to do it, you want to be consistent in doing it. Pick that one day per week, minimum, minimum, that you're willing to do this. Uh, I encourage every single day, one minute of video content. However, pick that one day and consistently do it. I don't want you to do three this week, two next week, one the following week. Do one every week. Because one, all the algorithms of all the platforms will like the consistency, therefore giving you more attention in the feeds. You can't help but be who you are. So some of you are doing video content. The question I have, are you repurposing any of your video content? Type in yes or no. Anybody repurposing any of their video content for those who've created it? Okay, I'm not seeing any responses. So I record video once, uh, I record long form video once per week. So I have not only my Facebook Live videos, but this will kind of sum it up if I was going to break it down. I'm gonna go to my blog show you a video here. Let me close out of Facebook. So what we learned from social media marketing world, this was a, I'm almost sure this was a Facebook live video. Okay, let's see here. Let's see if it'll play for me. So it was a Facebook live video. I downloaded that Facebook live video now it's a podcast. Not only is it a podcast, because you can easily turn a MP4 file to an MP3 file, we did audio to text, okay? So this was a Facebook Live video that's now on YouTube. We did first 
video to audio. We then did audio to text. So now it is not only on Facebook, it's on YouTube, it's on iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeart, Stitcher, Spotify, but it's also a blog post. So I'm generating the leads and then I'm repurposing that one piece of video content into multiple forms of content and an email went out today that leads you back to this video. So I cannot preach enough about leveraging video with our buyers and our sellers for our buyer consultations, utilizing dot loop and DocuSign, but also leveraging it for lead generation and then repurposing it to fulfill all of our marketing needs across any platform. That's really why I love it because of the ability to repurpose it. Yeah, I'm gonna generate leads, but then I'm gonna come back. And this is also, let me tell you why I don't really care as much about the visual content as I care about the audio content. If I have great audio, I'm gonna have a podcast. I'm gonna have a blog post. I'm gonna have a weekly email. And it all came from that one Facebook Live video. I could preach this time and time and time again, but the true value is I have leads going to my customer relationship management system. I have strong visibility for my brand and my marketplace. I'm considered a thought leader. I sit on a lot of panels, but it was because I got over my fear of video. Video has cha had changed the trajectory of my business. And even though we're, you know, in the, in the midst of the coronavirus and we're, I'm so quarantined, um, the governor in the state of Illinois mandated we stay in until the end of May. It hasn't impacted me the same way it's impacted others because I was already using these tools. So I didn't have to learn these tools. I was already using them and I was able, my favorite word now, my word of the year was refine. It is no longer refine, it's pivot. So I've been able to pivot my business because of the fact that I was already utilizing the tools. So if it's one thing I would say you would definitely want to add um, to your to-do list, that would just be get comfortable. Take, take this mobile device, and even if you're just recording to your phone, get comfortable because video, even after this is over, is going to consume more of our business than ever before. So it's not, it's not like we're going to go back to work and then this is going to stop, okay? It was already a very big component. It's going to be an even bigger component as we move forward whether we're dealing with coronavirus or not. It's, it's not getting ready to change, but video consumption is, has increased ridiculous amounts. And there are some people, they're gonna get used to this and they're gonna be like, oh yeah, I don't have to do that anymore. I'm gonna call my seller up and we're gonna do a seller guided tour. Seller didn't want you in the house anyway. Great, <laughs> I don't have to come. Home inspector, probably don't need the buyer there leaning over their shoulder uh, anyway. 360 cameras, drones, live streaming video, sit down and do a consultation. We have the proof for everything that exists. So those would be some of the, the reasons. Let's see. Oh, do you use TikTok? Barbara. So me and TikTok have had a love-hate relationship. At first, I said I wouldn't use TikTok because I will retire on September the 25th, 2033. Yes, I have it on my calendar. Uh, I think I mentioned my husband's a locomotive engineer. I will receive a spousal funded pension plan. The day he retires, I want to see what it feel like to pull my pension. So I'm retiring the day he retires. Um, with that being said, I don't need the demographics of TikTok in order to be successful and to retire the, in the way that I want to retire. Well, I wasn't going to use TikTok. And then I went to social media marketing world, set in a session with a TikTok influencer, and I was like, oh, I might use it. Then I went to the Remax uh, R4, and me and J-Man, we did a TikTok together that received a wonderful welcome to the world. Like, the engagement was ridiculous. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to use TikTok. Well, the first month of being quarantined, I had on my calendar that I was committed to do a TikTok video every day did not do one TikTok video 
And so I don't believe that TikTok is going to be a part of my business. I'm going to focus on live streaming Facebook video and repurposing the content because it puts me on so many different channels and I'm going to leave TikTok to someone else. So you, I say all that to say you have to understand who you need to attract in order to be successful. I don't need that generation in order to be successful uh, at this point. And so it's something that I'm not going to allocate the time to learn, le master or leverage. So you have to, uh, you, you, you want to decide. You mentioned the CRM. Which one do you recommend for videos? Um, so let me say this. I don't recommend a, uh, a CRM for videos. I recommend a CRM that you're going to use consistently. I happen to use the CRM that is built into MailChimp. MailChimp is an email marketing platform. And the reason I use it is because I do send out emails every single week. It's the two that I engage with the most. And so your CRM is only as good as your level of engagement. Um, the one that I was using before MailChimp, I wouldn't use now based on who acquired them. <laughs> kind of sum that up for you. And so you want to look at multiple CRMs and use the one that is most intuitive. If it's intuitive to you, you're more likely to use it, but it's only as good as uh, how you leverage it. There is a tool called dun, 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 R -E -T -I .us. on reti.us. They actually have a side-by-side -side comparison. If you put into that system what's important to you, they'll give you a couple of recommendations. Do you have a drone license? Can you speak on getting the license if you do? I do not have a drone license. Uh, I would state that one would need to research that. So just like TikTok, I purchased a drone last Christmas, not 2019, but 2018. Um, I did not use it before I could return it. So I returned it uh, and decided that I was not going to invest the time in learning how to use a drone. So I always take everything back to my business plan. And sometimes I will make some purchases, but within the return cancellation date, if I haven't used it, I'm taking it back. So me and TikTok won't be friends and I won't be buying a drone. <laughs> those, those, those are two things. Uh, uh, those are two things that I have not used. You know what? And I sent that message privately. Let me come back up here and send that R-E-T-I to the whole group, R-E-T-I.U-S, so that you could see it. Um, can you offer CE credits? Um, we can I offer CE credits? I will say that I have the credentials to offer CE in any state if the organization is issuing CE credits. So that would be a question for Amanda. Yes, Amanda. Uh, Miss Ruth, so we were supposed to, Marky was actually supposed to be with us in May for a joint event with Memphis, and we did have her approved for three hours of CE. Um, so we hope to reschedule that for the fall, and if so, yes, it will be included. But this is not a CE course. You know, uh, Dr. Scott Chambers, I don't remember the two, the comparison site address, if you could refresh my memory. I'm not sure what tool I was talking about. I know I told you to use InShot, but I don't remember the comparison tool. If you can let me know, then I could tell you uh, the site to go to. Well, I think it was the reti.us. Oh, I put it, uh, so reti, I dropped the link. Um, I had sent it privately just to Mike on accident. So I, did, I just posted the reti. You mentioned a mini drone earlier. What's that? Um, so they actually have drones that can fit in the palm of your hand, uh, that you have little mini cameras attached to them. Uh, their capabilities probably would not go above a two, three-story building, unlike some of the other drones. So it's a regular drone. It's just very small, kind of looks like, um, hmm, kind of looks like a mouse. Okay, and it has the propellers on it. And so it's not for high elevations, but for low elevations, you probably could definitely get away with using it for a single two story homes if you wanted to get um, hmm, photos or videos of how the roof looks or what's going on with the chimney. So it's a device that flies high, can take photo and video, and it comes back and you use a remote control to control it. I know we are pushing you on time. Leanne is going to close it out. Oh, not only. <laughs> 
uh, you know, I'll keep talking. And so uh, I'm working from home, guys, and I am a realtor. And so I love spending time uh, with my realtors and I like to get, um, I like to answer all of your questions. So I appreciate you for having me here today. <laughs>